Our next guest today for our Meet the Candidates for the upcoming election on September 14 is Councillor Greg Clancy. Councillor Clancy, good morning and thanks for your time. Yes, uh, good morning to you too, Damon. You've been a councillor now for, this is the second term. Second term. Even a, yeah. a shorter one. But for those that don't know who Greg Clancy is, where did you sort of come from and how do we end up with you in the Clarence Valley? Oh, well, I've been in the Clarence for a long time. Um, probably still not a local, as some people would say. Uh, moved here in 1978. Um, got away from Sydney, where I'd grown up. Um, loved the North Coast, always did. My father was born in Lismore, his mother in Bangalore, and her mother in Byron Bay, so I've got North Coast in the blood. I've also got relatives that were at McLean, most of them have passed away now, so ha have, have an attachment to the Clarence. But when I first came here, uh, particularly on my honeymoon, um, I really enjoyed the Clarence. I just, I just got bitten by the, the Clarence bug. Now, you're running on the Greens ticket, is that correct? That's right, yes. So, what's the Greens ticket got that an independent hasn't? Um, it's really been part of a family. Um, people say, oh, you know, you're being dictated to by the Greens. Well, that's not the case. Um, I vote on issues and I have attitudes that I would have whether I was a member of the Greens or not. It just so happens that most of my views align with the Greens. Um, I actually stood in 2012 um, as an independent and I got people that voted for me because of my green views but also because they knew me and and I actually came ninth in the primaries but when the uh, preferences were distributed I uh, I just missed out and one of the female councillors uh, candidates beat me and I can't remember which one it was at the time <laughs> um, so you know I, I've got a fairly good following outside of my green party following and I think a lot of people that vote for me are not necessarily green supporters, but they, they like what I do and, and have some green tinge to them. Without using a cliche, you were a little bit green at your previous, uh, <laughs> previous uh, time on council. Um, yes. You sort of found your feet. Uh, you yeah. became deputy mayor under um, Councillor Ian Tiley. That's right. The first, first year. Yes. Um, second year, you didn't stand as, as the deputy. How did you find this current term of council compared to the, the last term? Well, being a Green, you're, you're a bit isolated in some respects. Um, and I have been out there, I, I have, I've stood up for, for environmental issues and for the community. Uh, not always with a lot of support, but obviously with some support, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to achieve anything. On certain issues, I've had some really good support. But unfortunately, it's, it's, it's a hard gig being a councillor. You've got to get on with the other eight councillors, and that doesn't always happen. My first one was pretty rough, uh, and my, my second term uh, was very, very rough. So, yeah, look, I had some really good friends on this term, um, but there are other councillors that didn't particularly like me or my views, and that makes it difficult. Yes. Yeah. It would be good to be able to work as a team. What were some of your wins as a, as a councillor on, on this current term? On this term? term? Yeah. Um, well, I started out in my first term to try to um, get a policy in that we um, move away from uh, inst banks and financial institutions that support fossil, fuel, fossil fuels. And I was able to achieve that in this, this term. Um, I also was able to get a biodiversity committee established and that was, that was really good. Um, I raised the issue of um, phasing out native forest logging, now that didn't go down well with some people. Um, but I, I saw that as a, as a win because it raised the issue and I think it was a bit unfortunate because the real motion was sort of pushed aside for some other motion which we weren't really discussing. So um, look, I, I think I've just championed the environment and, and communities and I, I think that in itself is an achievement. You know? Do you think you may have been misunderstood as far as you know, your support for native, sorry, your support for, to stop native logging? Oh yeah, the whole issue was misunderstood because the idea was to, uh, the motion was to basically lobby the state government to develop a plan to transition away from native forest logging, which we have to do and it will happen. Would be better if council was to support that, but it was put up as though we were trying to close the timber industry down next week. And we had people, unions and people from interstate and all over the place coming, over 200 people. Um, and it was a bit daunting, but you know, it was what it was. I went out and had a chat to some of the people and 
you know, I'm a green. I'm used to. I'm used to being in the. And minority. you're still here, so they didn't. They didn't lynch you. No, they didn't lynch me. <laughs> <laughs> there were quite some, a few other, um, I suppose, heated topics that that went to council. That's Obviously, right. one of those was the regional aquatic centre, but one in particular was the Treelands Drive community precinct, yes. which caused a lot of division in council. It did. And a lot of questions over the whole management of council as well. Yes, and it. it yeah, there was a. It, it was very complicated and I fought to not demolish the old centre because I, although I had supported um, the, the grant and, and the money prior in the prior council, I wasn't aware that the intention was to demolish. That didn't come out clearly until this term and when I found out I, I, I did argue against that. I also had a motion get through council that we, um, we investigate option B which was to not demolish, uh, but then uh, the general manager brought up a, co uh, sorry, a rescission motion, which was carried because some of the councillors were told and believed that if we didn't go with option A, we would lose the funding. Now, there's, there's various information which suggests that wasn't the case, but it is now, like it's, it's a done deal now, we, we can't go back over that, but I was not happy with the way it all progressed. I think we could have used the $11 million to, to, to just renovate and add to the existing building. But now we've got, got the centre and uh, I hope it's been worth it. And obviously the Regional Aquatic Centre in Grafton, a lot of money's been borrowed to, to build that. Yes, I voted against the borrowings because I just felt it was excessive. Um, originally, uh, Councillor Johnston suggested that uh, we just go with the 50 metre pool and splash pool and then add the other parts of the, of the uh, centre as we could get funding. And I, I didn't support that initially because it looked like we had plenty of funding coming through, but we had a change of government, state government, and then suddenly the funding that we expected was uh, no longer there. So I thought, well, I'm, I'm okay to borrow a few million dollars because sometimes borrowing is important mm. and you've got to do it. but. We ended up borrowing $27 million, mainly for the pool, but a little bit of that for Treelands Drive. And I, I just thought it was excessive, so I voted against that. So if anyone thinks that I voted against the pool, that's not really the case. I was all for the pool, but progressive, as we got the funding to sort of build it progressively. Again, that was overruled. The pool's being built now. Some councillors thought that was wonderful. I, I think that it was a bit of a, a sad day that you know, we, we, we're putting so the uh, ratepayers in, into so much debt. But do you think in the long run, from a community perspective, it will be a good thing for the wider community to be able to use? Oh, well, there's no doubt about that. But it's a matter of balancing. Um, you know, you, you, you can do things in stages and still come out with the same result. I think the, from what I could see from the community's um, input, the 50 metre pool was the main thing they were after. And, um, we could, have, we could have done that, satisfied them, um, allowed them to have their, their summer periods at the pool and then slowly build on. Mm. It wasn't to be. Third term, if you get elected on September 14, is there unfinished business for you on council? Oh, there's always unfinished business. Council is, is the, what's the right word, glacially slow, or it moves at a glacial pace very slow you know to get anything done you, you you start off lobbying for something and then you move motions and 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 once even when something's approved it's often not within a month or two before you know it might be six months or 12 months before things come through so I, I'm still seeing um, what I consider to be the wrong species of plants being put in in council developments um, Womba um, the playground at Womba, the plants there are not the local ones from that area. I think council should be leading the way and showing, you know, in terms of biodiversity that we can, we can grow local native plants and put them in. Um, maybe not everywhere, but certainly things like the Womba playground, the Omara precinct, uh, the park, Bailey Park, and also the Grafton waterfront. Um, they employed, uh, well, the contractors that were given that job employed subcontractors from the Tweed and they've been planting trees there which 
paperbarks. They're native, they're Australian, but the paperbarks they planted don't occur south of Maryborough in Queensland. I just think we should be getting it a bit better than that. The other thing that I want to see in this term is the employment of an ecologist. We need an ecologist because we need someone to advise the planners and the natural resource people. We've got some good natural resource people that have a, a bit of an idea of ecology, but we really need someone who's experienced qualifications and, and basically job is to advise on, on ecological issues. That's, you know, that's where I worked. I can, I can see the need for it. I can see when we don't have an ecologist, I can see where the problems are. Um, but so far, the general manager and the existing councillors have decided to not go ahead. Well, the councillors decided because it's really a job for the general manager to decide who, or which staff are appointed, um, they decided to leave it to her. I felt we could make a recommendation to the general manager. We can't tell her what to mm. do in terms of what staff, but I would have thought our, as, a, as the governing body, we could say, we as a governing body would like to see a general, uh, sorry, a uh, general manager, <laughs> like to see an ecologist. So that's, that's another thing I'd like to follow. Is that some of the frustration that I can hear coming through that, you know, you would like to give more direction or suggestions yeah. to, to council management and it's sort of not, not getting through, through the keeper? One of the problems is from putting myself in their position is that they've got nine councillors. And if you look at the division within this council, trying to keep the nine happy or, or to do what the nine wants, we as, as, the, as the governing body do direct the general manager. But to be able to do that, we have to agree mm, okay. ourselves on what to direct. And so that's why it's been difficult to achieve some things because we can't direct the general manager unless we have a majority of councillors voting on a particular matter. The other way we can get things done is to, to put in notices of motion. And they take a lot of work. It depends on the issue, of course, but they can take a, a, a lot of work. And unless you've got a chance of getting them through, half the time it's not really worth pursuing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is just to, to fly the flag. But yeah. You mentioned before division in the council. Yes. Um, that's Blind Freddy could, could see that. That's right. Um, was that disappointing? Extremely so. When this council was elected, I, I had really high hopes that we would work together, be collegiate. In fact, I called a meeting at Lawrence before we officially met to meet socially and to have a bit of a discussion so that some of the more experienced councillors could tell the, new, the newbies you know, some of the, the, the things that they were likely to, to, to come up with. And right from the start, some of the, well, one councillor in particular refused to attend. Um, and then when I put it on a particular day that uh, she couldn't attend, she then said, I only put it on that day so she couldn't attend. So that was disappointing. And then another one of the councillors that attended uh, made out that it was a, the meeting was called as a plot to get rid of the general manager, which was not the case. It was, it was basically because I personally felt I didn't have that in my first term. And I thought to meet with the existing council, the, the, re, the ones that were re-elected, plus the new people, mm. uh, would be a good thing. And it was a good thing. Some of the friendships that were formed on that day lasted, but, uh, but some, of the, some of the disagreements got worse. Would you try and do that again if you were elected, to try and, if there were new councillors that were elected? Yeah, look, I think it's a good idea. Uh, it might have backfired a bit, but I think it's still achieved a lot too. So I think it's a good thing. You know, we've got to work together. And even though we've got different views, different po politics and, and all the rest, um, we still have to learn how to work together. And I think having a, a social, unofficial get together at the beginning is, is a good way to go. You've preferenced um, one of the candidates is the Secretary of Yamba Can, yes. Lynn Cairns. Yes. Now, it's no secret that there was um, some illegal action that was, first of all, under the name of Clarence Valley Council. That's right. That changed to the general manager's name. That's right. Um, how do you think that would play out if Ms Cairns was elected as a candidate, or sorry, as a councillor? As a councillor. Um, and we had the current general manager still in her position. Well, it's going to be an interesting situation. Um, 
I, I think that um, Lynn Cairns has probably got a, a fairly good chance of getting in, because no, we, none of us know. I may not get back in. But um, I think there's a good chance. And the general manager's in for five years. She's probably got about, not three years or something left. They're going to have to learn how to, to get on if, if, if Lynn does get elected. Um, and, and, and Lynn, you know, Lynn's a very strong character. So it's going, going to be very interesting. Should we be taking the popcorn and the chop tops, <laughs> hiring uh, former councillor Jeff Smith to, to sell them outside the council chamber? Well, chambers? maybe that's why he's, he hasn't stood. He might, he might think he's got a conflict of interest if he's selling ice cream <laughs> or popcorn <laughs> at the meetings. He's a businessman. He can see the vision. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Just, just finally, um, if you were re-elected on September 14, you yeah. have been deputy mayor. Yes. Would you stand for the position of mayor? Look... I would have to see who else stood. I think there's probably one, maybe two other candidates who could do the job well. Um, I would put my hand up if I felt that I was the best person for the job. I'd be more interested in being a deputy again if, if that was you know, available to me. Um, in terms of time and, and commitment, um, I think I could probably do best to do the deputy. But you know, never say no. Um, We'll see what comes of it. And I may not even have enough uh, support to be deputy, but because mm. the other councillors vote for who the mayor is and who the deputy is. So, yeah, the mayoral election will be interesting again. And I hope that the mayoral election doesn't create any uh, division uh, like it did last time. I think hopefully uh, whoever gets elected mayor, the other eight councillors can, can you know, get behind them. And even if they disagree with them on certain issues, but basically respect them and give them some support. And just finally, mm. why should the people of the Clarence vote for Greg Clancy for another term of yeah. council on September 14? Because I think I've done a really good job in, in, in under difficult circumstances. I'm getting a lot of positive feedback. People want me there. I mean, I, I was thinking of not standing because of the, the vitriol and, mm. and, and the negative side of what had happened. And I was very disappointed, I, I was disillusioned. And then I thought, with all the people approaching me and saying, are you standing again? I thought, well, really, um, I do enjoy it, even though there's a lot of negatives in it, but there is some positive too. And, and working for the community and working to protect the environment, they're the things that I'm doing. And I want to keep doing that, and I think that's why people should vote for me. And if they don't, well, it's all right. I'll, I'll just pack up and go bush. Well, good luck on September 14 and thank you for your time. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Damon.